Hello my friends, I hope you are doing well. Welcome back to another little video. In today's video, I'm just basically going to respond to an email that I got uh, from someone, Alex Alvarez, hopefully I pronounced your surname correctly, sorry if I didn't. And he was asking about uh, some of the different ways that I make money as a designer, um, whether it's all logo work or if I do a lot of merchandise or if I have um, you know, some particular agencies or firms that I work with a lot and stuff like that. So sort of make a quick video and um, I'll just outline all the different ways that I make money. Uh, I have a bunch of different income streams as a designer. I think that's kind of important really because it, these days you, you just have to diversify because if you put all your effort into one, you know, one specific area and something happens, then that can be really, really dangerous and really damage your business. So it's something to keep in mind. For example, I've seen over the last few months, there's a lot of, of changes on Instagram. I mean, I don't really want to rant about this for the whole video or anything, but the amount of people who see my posts, I mean, I've got about 15,000 followers on Instagram now, and the amount of people who used to see my posts would be, you know, seven or 8,000. Uh, and now, I mean, I did a post yesterday that was online for like seven or eight hours. And uh, I think I got 250 people saw it in their newsfeed. So Instagram has been driving the algorithm for the newsfeed, just like they do with Facebook. So yeah, you know, that's going to be, uh, I've, I'm already seeing a decline in the number of jobs I get through Instagram now, just because less and less people are seeing my work. So keep that in mind. But yeah, anyway, enough with the, that negative stuff. So the first way that I make money obviously is Instagram. So uh, yeah, I, I get a lot of people messaging me through Instagram. I do my best to actually post something every single day. I've been doing that for, well, pretty much since the beginning. I, I only started designing uh, maybe two years ago and I had this goal to just do something every single day and make sure I sat down and draw and practice for like a couple of hours every afternoon after work and stuff like that. So I, I've posted something every day and yeah, gradually I've seen an increase up to 15,000 followers, which I'm pretty happy with. So yeah, I guess over, over time, as I continue to post, more and more people are finding me on Instagram. And as a result, I'm getting more and more messages from people on Instagram asking for work, which is awesome. I would say this is pretty much where most of my design work comes from. Uh, probably like 70% of the design jobs I get uh, are from Instagram. Now, the other places that I get design jobs are Dribbble. Um, I have a profile on Dribbble. I don't get too many requests from here. I don't think that many people use it. But when I do, I, I've noticed that one thing that's been pretty consistent is the people who find designers on Dribbble are usually bigger companies and stuff like that or big agencies. So Instagram, I get a lot of really small brands and, and bands and stuff, which is fine. I love working with them. And then on Dribbble, it tends to be bigger companies I've noticed. So keep that in mind. Um, also, I've got a couple of invites I'm pretty sure for Dribbble. So if you need one, hit me up in the comments or something, give me a link to your work and maybe I can uh, give you guys an invite or something like that. And another website that I get jobs from is the, the Behance. Is that even how you pronounce it? I don't even know. I call it Behance. I've never actually heard anyone say it out loud. But um, yeah, I have a profile on here and I have like a, yeah 1,600 followers. And every now and then I come in and post a project that I've been working on. I got pretty lucky actually these shirts that I designed for a brand that I used to run got featured as well so that gave me a little boost in uh, reach and followers which is awesome and yeah I've had a few companies hit me up through here I'd say one in ten jobs I do probably comes from this website so always good I mean it's all it takes is a few minutes for you to make a profile and just chuck some of your work on there it's really not a lot of effort and you could get a pretty good return I think so definitely check that out so enough of that now if you didn't already know I also have a sticker printing company called Die Last Print Co um, and I print custom die cut stickers for for people so as you can see these ones here this was really a, a side business that I started last year um, I just love stickers really and I was doing a lot of designs for people and they were always asking me about stickers and where they can get the designs that I'd done printed as stickers so I started researching it and invested a bunch of money and uh, yeah, a lot of trial and error later and here we are. So this is really awesome because I can get a job 
for a client to print a bunch of stickers and then while the, the printer's running and they're being printed, I can sit down and I can reply to emails for my design clients or work on some designs. And sometimes, you know, no matter how popular you get, sometimes as a designer, there's just weird kind of periods where it's really quiet. You don't have that many, many jobs on. So having a side business like this is super useful because yeah, it can help to fill those those time slots and just make sure that you're always busy and you've always got some money coming in. Another way that I make money is uh, doing commission paintings. So I, I painted these two leather jackets last week for a, a wedding gift, which is cool. Um, I've also recently started learning and, and doing murals. So I did this one over at uh, Crowbar here in Brisbane. And I've got a couple of other murals in the pipeline as well. So again, it's just another way to fill time when maybe you don't have any clients or any design jobs on, you know, try and diversify and find other areas that you can learn. No one ever taught me how to do this. I so just sort of researched it, a bit of trial and error. And uh, yeah, in addition to painting murals, I also have some merchandise that I've just recently started releasing through a company called 2400, which is awesome. And basically they will have a collection for me online and there's going to be a bunch of t-shirts, patches, pins and stuff like that that I've ordered so there's one of the patches here that's now online and another one there and over the next couple of weeks there'll be a bunch of shirts and uh, some pins and stuff as well so yeah this is another uh, another way just to add a little bit of extra income I guess because you know it doesn't take that much time to design stuff you fork out some money to buy some of the, the merchandise and you know if it sells you can make a little bit of a little bit of income on the side as well and pretty much that's how it works for me is I just have a bunch of different income streams and together they add up to just basically just barely being a full-time wage that allows me to work for myself so that's pretty much always been my goal since I started a couple of years ago I just couldn't stand working for anyone else I just knew I had to get out and eventually I had to be doing my own thing so I've done as much as I can to try and diversify and find ways to make money as a designer and uh, yeah luckily enough I'm I'm now self-employed and I wouldn't change that for anything so all these little ways that you can just you know sit down put in the hours put in the effort and make a, a few extra bucks here and there uh, it all starts to add up over time another way that I make a little bit of money is uh, I actually design my very own fonts and I sell them online on creative market um, whoops So you can see here that there's a, these are a few of the different fonts that I've done over the years. And one of the great things about these is that you can, oops, you can design a font and, and put it online. And it, you know, once the work's been done and the font's been made, it doesn't really take, you know, any any maintenance hardly. So the font can just sit there online. Over time, it can gradually just continue to sell and make you money. So, you know, it's only 10 bucks. I don't sell a lot of them. I certainly don't make, you know, millions of dollars off this or anything, but, you know, I spent a couple of days working on this font, got it out there, sell it for about 10 bucks, I think. And every now and then I get an email to say, hey, someone just bought one, someone just bought one, you know, probably one a day, I'd say. And so over time, that, that, that really starts to add up. So again, it's just another way to just keep topping up your income just a little bit so that in times when your freelance work is maybe a little bit quiet or you're not making as much as you as you need you've got these other little backup plans that help to kind of keep you afloat and yeah in addition to that I'm also thinking about doing some workshops and stuff like that where I actually sit down face to face and teach people how to draw letters and you know do like a course and stuff like that with people so again that's just another little way that uh, you can make a little bit of money I think a lot of freelance designers well most of the ones that I talk to that are self-employed they actually tend to have one or two clients that are really really regular or maybe like an agency that outsources a lot of work to them all the time so they tend to get you know really really steady work from one or two clients all the time that's not how it works for me though um, yeah my, my clients are varied I don't really have any agencies or, or anything like that so in addition to all that stuff, I've also started making these YouTube videos, obviously, but uh, I don't think I'll ever make any <laughs> any actual money off it. I think you have to have like a million subscribers or something to make anything worth looking at, basically. So I think so far I've made one or two cents, so I'm pretty pumped about that. But uh, yeah, this is just a, another way that if I get a little bit of downtime, you know, I can make a video. I can help some people out, make some new friends, and yeah, just continue pushing myself to be as, as diverse as I can. 
And uh, speaking of YouTube, if you uh, enjoy this video and enjoy the other videos and tutorials and stuff, it'd be awesome if you wouldn't mind uh, giving this video a thumbs up or considering to subscribe because that actually makes a, a massive difference for me. So thanks a lot, guys.